What is up guys? Joe Holland here. Thank you for coming along on another one of these adventures. This time we are heading up into the North Main Woods to a remote wilderness lake to try to catch the elusive muskie. I am super jacked up to catch a muskie again. Last year was the first time I ever caught one ice fishing. Little bit different circumstances last year. Last year I went to a place oh, where the there aren't as many, but time you have a chance to have a Woo! absolute tank bruiser. <laughs> this time I'm going to a place where supposedly there's a little bit more, but they don't get very big. It should be good fishing regardless of size, but it would be kind of cool to get another double digit one, put another DD on the ice. That's my biggest muskie I've ever caught. Wow. Roads are pretty clear, so it's hammer down time. I got about two and a half hours behind me. I got about three to three and a half hours in front of me, so I can't dilly dally. I'd like to stop at every bait shop and be a bait shop bum, but I gotta get moving because I don't have a lot of time from when my estimated time of arrival is to till darkness sets in, and I want to get camp set up because it's the only place I have to sleep tonight. <laughs> Had to wait this morning till about 8 a.m. before I could leave my town. I had to go and register the new snowmobile and I had to go and register my truck while I was there. So I lost a little bit of weight this morning in there and finally got on the road. Two and a half hours behind me already. Made one quick stop at a bait shop to see if I could buy some hooks that I'm looking for. They didn't have the hooks I was looking for, so I ended up buying a, a 22 target and a little tiny like sunflower heater for the buddy heater to have in my mobile shack and to use as a backup in case I need a little heat source either in the trailer or in the shack where I'm sleeping if the big buddy heater ever fails. This one's only a 3800 BTU heater, but it, it'll probably do the trick in a small area. Temps and weather for this week. Right now we are in the single digits. We're at seven degrees Fahrenheit, above zero. And we're looking at some pretty cold temps for this week. I think the next two days are supposed to be like highs of like nine or 10 with lows in the negatives at night. And then the third day, it's gonna be negative 18 they're calling for at night with a negative as a high for the day. So as always the case, as soon as you get past those mountains, the weather's always a little bit colder than they predict. So I'm expecting another negative 20 degree night. These mountains up here, they make their own weather. Doesn't look like we have too much wind and this lake I'm fishing is pretty small. So I'm not too worried about the wind. I've never been here before. So it's all up in the air. It's like, man, it's just such a great feeling when you're heading to one of these trips. And especially if it's, if it's new and new to you, it's just so much anticipation so much excitement so much anticipation it's really hard to keep my foot from going too hard down to the floor give you a little trip update i have been off the tar road now for about an hour i have another 55 miles to go gps is saying it's going to be a little bit over two hours to do those 50 something miles which probably right i'm hovering right around 30 miles right now 30 miles per hour right now but there's a lot of slow down areas with sharp turns and hills. Pretty rough going, the roads are pretty rough. I don't know if you can hear this rattling over here. Pete, even Pete's teeth are chattering. Pop, it's too and and ruts keep... Looking pretty good. I stopped in at the last trading post and it was funnier than heck. The guy working there, Jamie, real good guy says oh geez he goes it's Joe Holland he goes great now we can expect some terrible weather if he's in the area <laughs> oh man that cracked me up because he's been watching the YouTube and it seems to be wherever I go I bring some pretty nasty weather with me I got a pretty good kick out of that so Jamie if you're watching thanks for the laugh today bud hope I don't bring too bad a weather <laughs>
Okay. All right. Made it in six and hours and twenty minutes from when I left home. I have never been here before. The road in isn't plowed, so I'm gonna have to take the snowmobile in first and find out how it looks, if it's safe, and pick an area to get set up in. Come back out and get the gear. But first things first, I gotta put some clothes on. I got my I got my driving clothes on. And that ain't going to cut it because it's five degrees out here and there's a little bit of wind. Okay, I found the way in. I found the way not to go in, too. I almost got her stuck. I got her half stuck about five times in some really thick drifts that blew off the lake. If that was my old sled, I'd be digging and digging and digging, and she'd be buried right in there with no hope. But this thing, I just jumped on one side pretty hard and got her to level out, push her down, and get fed of the corn, and she popped right out of a pretty amazing tool right there. Man, is that thing worth every single penny I put into it already? All right, anyway, so got out to the lake. Now what I'm gonna do is take a load out, stop at the edge of the lake, walk out, do an ice test, and drill and see how much ice we got. It's not too far in there, it's a couple miles, so I'm not gonna take a crazy load in. I, I'm, I'm, I could fit everything in one trip, but there's no sense. I'm gonna, I'll do two trips. You might notice a little bit of a new addition. I built a uh, Brandon box for the top of my otter here. That should be good. I forgot something and it was right there. I forgot my Milwaukee drill, which is kind of dumb, but lucky for me, I got my Strike Master to drill holes. It just won't be able to drill my tent stakes in or 
I was gonna use it to go do some test holes and some other things around camp, but forgot it. It was on my list and right next to the batteries. It must be sitting on my workbench. Happens sometimes. So I'll take this first load out there and pick a spot and start to get set up. Okay, I am out here with the first load. I drilled a pilot hole when I first got in the lake. I hit some slush over there where I came on and I drilled to like 14 inches and just stopped drilling. I didn't go all the way through. I came, I went down lake, crossed where it was narrower, came up here and dug down. Didn't get any slush digging down, so that's good. So I can put the tent probably down to the ice over here. And then I drilled a pilot hole there. I went down another 14, 15 inches and didn't hit water yet. So I didn't bother drilling through. I don't need to bring any slush up if it wants to slush up. So I think I'm going to unload right here, go back out and get the, the rest of the load with the floor and then set up for the night. I'm on the clock. I got about an hour. You can see the sun's getting a little bit low over there. So I got probably an hour. I'm feeling pretty confident about the time. The more I do this, the quicker I am at setting up. So I'm not very worried about that as long as I keep moving and doing things the right way. So I'm going to unload here. I'm not going to dig down until I get the floor and then I'll get the floor and dig down. Okay, we are unloaded. That was a pretty good load right there, actually. That's the first load. I brought some more toys this trip. I don't know, have a little bit more fun, I guess, if there's such a thing. There's quite a bit more snow here than I was expecting. There's at least 12 to 15 inches everywhere, and then there's some big high drifts. That's not good. Looks like that chainsaw leaked on my tent. Yeah. Yeah, hopefully it didn't go through the the tent case it looks like it probably did oh well we'll figure it out when we get there okay off to get the second load let's go All right, the floor should ride pretty smooth, pretty good, just leaning up against the outsides like that, and then all this room in the middle for more gear. So I think I'm going to leave the bait hooked right up into the truck right here. It's plugged into a 12 volt and just, I'll just run out in the morning and, and grab what I need. Aha! I just, I just spotted my clam bibs. They're in that otter. <laughs> Man, I tore up the whole, the whole house looking for those things. But the last time I saw them was in Millinock and I stopped to see my buddy Ozzy and and when I did, I changed out of those so I, I didn't track all that stuff into his house. And I've been looking everywhere for them. And I guess I put them in this, in this otter thing that I still haven't opened yet this year. So I just found them. That's good. There should be a handful of GoPro batteries in the pocket. That's what I was more worried about. Still plenty of room to throw some more stuff in. And, and my box up here has got room in it too.
gonna try something different this trip. Something I've never done is set the floor up on top of the snow. So I just drove around about eight or 10 times and really tried to pack it down. It's still a little fluffy. I don't know. I don't know if I'll be able to get that to sit flat, but it's worth a try. And then I could just throw the kickers down into the ice and I won't screw the corners of the shack down. Let's see if, let's see if the floor will lay down. That might work. It's got enough flotation. I think it's gonna work. I probably shouldn't walk where I'm throwing the next one, but that's all right. Let's try it. I don't really walk anywhere but right here, so that'll be the part that really squishes down. Bed looks like it'll be flat. Let's set up the tent. I think it's gonna work. I could maybe still screw those down in the corners. Actually, I think I can. I don't wanna go, I don't wanna put it super tight down because I'm like sitting on like eight inches of snow and I would lose eight inches of headroom if my floor is eight inches up from where the tent's sitting. So I think I'll still screw it down and just kind of put those at an angle. Guys, you gotta, you gotta get these anchored somehow, even if it's just a few, because all it takes is a breath of wind, and these things just kite right up. I've seen it. Wow, these are all in rough shape. I didn't realize that. 
they're in really rough shape. All the tips are pretty blunt from that last trip when I was driving them into the rocks. All right, so I still have about four inches more I could go, but I'm a good four inches in there, so that'll keep that from blowing away. Let's see if I can find another semi-sharp one. Ugh. Ugh. <laughs> we'll get it. So it's not looking good for getting these in by hand. Oh man, they're pretty dull, and they some of them bent over from that last trip where I was driving them into the rocks. So I got to bring these home and sharpen them. Let me see if there's. I got two in. That might go in. That won't. That won't. Nope. Nothing to catch. Nope. All right, no worries. I'm gonna, I'll throw snow around all the edges and worse comes to worse, I could go cut a couple logs and tie my ropes down to those as downriggers. When there's a will, there's always a way. But just doing this will help the wind tremendously from getting underneath. Last trip, I could just about barely get my, my tent back because I, I, I threw so much snow on minute pros. I still got to be careful not to sweat. I'm running out of time to get set up before dark, but I'm ahead of it now. So I got the floor in the tent, that's the key. The rest of it's just kind of house cleaning at this point. Sun's getting pretty low. But we still do have some daylight left. I'm not too worried about setting up in dark now that I have those great lights too. But this is what you're gonna look like. I'm gonna bring the snowmobile around so everything's closer and I'm not working up a sweat walking it in, in and out of that door from 20 feet away rather than just a couple feet away. There's a difference between lazy and smart. Alright, cots down, now for the bedding.
of the eggs again. Oh no, the eggs again. Oh man, the bag rip. Let's see, let's see, did we lose any? Yeah, we lost one. Dang it. Shoot, the other ones. We might have broken yolks, but that's all right. We'll let that freeze and then I'll clean it up. Dang it, so close. So close. Friggin' Hannaford Brothers. Hannaford Brothers in your bags ain't worth a dime. All right, that's everything out of this sled. The rest of that stuff's just various fishing stuff that can or can come in. Okay, that's everything. Got the heater going. Sun's down, so I don't know if it's worth it to try to run three or four miles back out and get set up for a hole. I think I'm probably better off getting everything stowed away in here. I got a little bit more work to do than normal because I forgot my drill. <laughs> well, let's take a look at camp. All right, that's what she's looking like. Bed, got my sleeping bag, pillow and cot, and a cot pad. Right there, some various food. Got my heater going. Got the light, got my boot holder, which I cut down a little bit so it can fit right tight against the wall. Table here, two totes with various camping stuff and food. Got 11 of the 12 eggs made it out, which is good. Got my cook stove right there. The waters were already starting to freeze up, so I'm gonna put those right in front of the heater. And then here I have a gun. Under that, in that little yellow bag, there's all my video stuff. In the big yellow bag underneath there is my clothes. Got my trusty chair, some jacket, sweaters, a couple of electronics there, and just fishing stuff there. So that's the setup for camp. It went really quickly. I'm, I'm kind of curious to see how this is going to go being seven inches up off the ice. I thought about it last second. I hit some more slush coming on over there, and I was like, Ah, it's just not worth it to wake up in the morning with four or five inches of slush there. And I'm glad I did because I didn't have all my drill bits anyway. I didn't have all, all my, my screw anchors are all dull and bent. I got to put those on the grinder and get them sharp again so they can dig in. Do, uh, going into the ground last trip, I didn't even think about it, but hitting rocks and stuff definitely put a hurting on the tips. But out here pack basket with the traps pretty well ready to go i'm gonna go over those tonight i think i might have a little bit too big of hooks on there for what i think's in here uh, i got my auger here i'll bring that battery in keep it warm at night just in case got a little target there got a video camera another axe that's my catch bag i'll probably bring that in because it's got a scale in it i brought the chainsaw this trip just to have i was gonna see if i could cut a sight hole for you guys and really try something cool on musky but I don't know, there might be too many inches of ice. Uh, I'm not sure exactly how many inches we have. I've Test holes were like 12 to 14, pretty easy, and I didn't go all the way through. A uh, shovel over here, I changed out the handle on it to a wooden handle. Actually, no, I took a different shovel, and I took this off of the one that had the bend, so I got the handle on that, so that other one doesn't have a handle and it's got a bent shaft now. Sun's down over there. It's pretty cold out. It was five when I left the truck and it's definitely getting colder. Got a slight breeze coming from this direction. So I'm still debating. Maybe while I still have some daylight, I'll see if I can find a log down or a leaner. Looks like there might be a leaner up there where I can go cut some logs and have some weight to, to bring these tie downs to so they don't blow in. All right, trying to get this buddy heater going. I don't know what it's, what's wrong with it. Maybe it's clogged. I ran it inside my buddy's barn on high for, geez, probably like a third of a tank and just let her let her fly wide open until she ran out. And I got three tanks in here. I got two and a half tanks, full, full tanks in here. Two full tanks and a half tank. 
And the two full tanks, for some reason, what it didn't want to run with the two full tanks. I just switched it over to the half tank and it seems to be going pretty good right now. But it was blowing the pilot hard, like wicked fast, wicked high flame up for a pilot. And then hardly anything when I put it on one, two, or three. Might be a regulator issue. When I took it off and switched tanks, I tried opening the valve and it went wide open without anything connected to it. And I think the valve was stuck open on high because it was so cold. Looks looks like it's running now. We'll see if it stays running. Kind of glad I picked up that backup now. And I think it's going to drop a little bit more in a minute. She's dropping pretty quick. She's dropping pretty quick tonight. I think we're going to have a pretty pretty good low tonight. Temp is dropping like a rock. Pretty cold out there. Got the buddy heater running pretty good right now. Got the new one running just to try it out over here. Seems to be doing pretty good. All in all, I think I'm in pretty good shape for the shape I'm in. Got the shack all set up. Floor set up on top of the snow. We'll see how that goes. I don't know if it's going to be any warmer or any colder. <laughs> I don't think it'll be much different. If anything, maybe it'll let the wind sneak in underneath the door. I threw enough snow around the edges. But I got everything set up. Bed set up. Probably going to have something real good tonight if if i can get them to thaw i can't believe they already froze just from being in the truck i guess and then the ride out but those are cusk nuggets from last trip i've been eating them all all week while i was editing videos and i still had some left so i brought them out to show you guys how much i enjoy eating them because i really do enjoy eating them so i'm gonna set them right here over over the buddy heater and let them cook on low till they thaw out enough so i can put them on the fry pan and then tonight i stopped by my buddy's where my buddy works at a slaughter shop but i didn't want to bug him while he was working but to support a local business i picked up a nice chunk of steak right there so that's a what are we looking at here main grown rib eye main grown rib eye should be pretty good so i'll drive that into me with some potatoes and Maybe eat some cheese and pepperoni, as Stephen would say, ahead of time. So it'll be big dinner tonight, because didn't really eat much today traveling. Didn't eat anything, I guess. I had a little bit this morning. was so excited to get up here, I hit the road. Kind of takes a lot out of you. I'm actually pretty tired right now. You know, six hours in a truck, six and a half hours in a truck, and not really eating or drinking too well. Pounded a couple cups of coffee into me. That was about it. So I haven't seen anybody up here, which is always nice it's crazy still right now that's why the temp's dropping right out we're at negative 24 and a half right now it's crystal clear sky you can see every single star out there i'll bring you out there in a little bit and hopefully we'll see hopefully you guys will be able to see but it's really hard to pick it up on the gopro but just how pretty those stars are at night up here in the north main woods where the nearest foreign light source is probably probably 100 miles away here where i am we're close to it. Pretty excited about the fishing tomorrow. Let me see. Where did I put my paperwork? I got paperwork here somewhere. I got this paperwork with all my notes, but I also have a map of this lake. And this is a pretty unique lake because, let's see, before the 30s, it was like 650 square foot, I think. And then in the 30s, Great Northern Paper built, first they dug a canal so it could reach the Penobscot, so they could float logs down to Millinocket. And it was like a two mile canal. And then they dammed the canal, so that way they could build up the water high enough to get the float going and the flow going with all the logs in it. So that brought it from like 650, 680 square acres to 1280 or almost 1300 acres. So it like doubled the size of this lake. It's not a big lake, it's small. It's like two and a half, miles long by about a half mile wide they stopped using it you know when they stopped doing log drives and the dam just kind of went to disrepair and and went away and when that went away it went back to its original shape and size which is back down to like 650 acres so it's not a great big pond it's going to be fun to fish 
I, I've never been here before. I've got, I've had two friends who fished here, one in open water, and he was telling me about the weed lines. And then another friend of mine, she came up and ice fished, uh, I think last year, the year before, and she did really well up here. So there are muskie in here. I have not heard of anything over double digits being caught. I guess it's a lot of fish, but not big ones, which is perfectly fine. We're going to have fun catching muskie and a lot of muskie and I might have a few tricks on my sleeve too, so it should be a fun trip. But I don't know about the depth of the lake. I've read one of my maps says it's 20, one says it's, it's, it's only as deep as 14. So we, with the pan optics, we're going to be able to find that out. We'll be able to find the deep holes, the edges, any underwater points. And we'll spend a decent amount of time tomorrow looking around. I'll probably set five traps right away, get those in the water, and then go out and do some exploring with the pan optics and just do a bunch of pilot holes where I drill, point it, point it down and look ahead you know 150 feet or 200 feet in all directions to see what the depths are if there's any changes or how deep it really is pretty excited to fish really excited to catch a muskie it's just such a special fish and we don't have many bodies of water in maine that have them i have to thank my canadian brother and thank you canada for stocking them up on the saint john or saint croix river that also flows into Maine. So that's the only reason we have them is they stocked them in the 1970s because their fishing game is wise enough to put them in. It's a great fish, phenomenal fish. So such a beautiful fish that is apparently it's really good eating too, which we might try this trip. There's no limit on them. It's pretty weird in Maine, no limit on muskie at all. I really like fishing these ponds or lakes that I've never been on. It's just so exciting and you know, it, it adds to the anticipation of if you're going to catch one, what's in here. I heard there's also yellow perch in here, which I've never heard any yellow perch this far north in Maine. So that'll be interesting if they're in here and it'll be fun to catch those. I'm guessing that's your primary forage. So a lot of the jig baits I brought up are, are in that yellow perch family. I brought up sea smelts right out of the ocean for bait. So <laughs> those could be a wicked treat for these fish. That could be something really nice for them. They're in the truck right now because I could plug that right into a 12 volt and it won't run the battery too hard on the truck. I've done it like three or four nights at, at home, different nights, and truck starts just fine in the morning. So what I'll do is I'll, I left them in there because it'll be probably warmest in the truck. It'll be like probably 10 degrees colder, warmer in the truck than it is outside. The aerator's running off the truck and then I'll probably go pick those up first thing in the morning, bring them in so I can fish with them and then I have two aerators built into that fray bill that'll run 24 hours or more each to keep them alive i'm guessing i might be able to do four days on this trip i heard the latest snow report before i came in was two to four foot so four foot would be an issue getting out of here i would definitely need a plow truck to come in and i don't know exactly where they're cutting or where the nearest cutting is so kind of hard to base the whole trip on just guessing where they're going to be cutting this road out here isn't like a major road so i think i'm going to go for four days guys i think it's important to talk for a second about safety when you're up here and you're alone and you're very very far from the nearest person the nearest town or the nearest help a couple things to really think about you have to think everything through don't just react like you normally would if you're downstate all your knives Make sure they're sharp. A dull knife is a very unsafe knife because you end up putting more pressure on and you end up cutting differently than you normally would. Always cut away from you. Don't cut like towards your fingers, towards your leg, anything like that. Always know where your auger blades are. Be super careful with your auger blades. Make sure you don't hit a foot or fall into them or anything like that. Your axes, knives, scissors, any blades that you bring up, be super, super careful because like I said, you're a long way from from any town or hospital or a person for help. So you cut yourself, you're on your own. Fire is another thing, so be careful with your propane. You know, don't take any chances with that and any fire that you're running, you know, that that's another thing that could get you in trouble. Then the snowmobiles, you know, there's just so much power with those things. When you get, the further you get away from town, the more careful you really need to be. So please keep that in mind if you guys ever think about doing a solo trip like I'm doing. I've done this a, a lot of times, so a lot of this stuff has become second nature to me. But there's always in my head those thoughts of, okay, what could go wrong? What's the worst that could happen? How do I avoid that happening? How do I avoid something wrong happening? You know, what kind of dangers do I see every single day? Or what kind of dangers do I see 
you know, every minute of every day and how do I avoid those dangers and make sure that those dangers don't come into play. So those are things that I think of from doing this for many, many years. So if you're thinking about just getting into this, you know, I've always said, try doing it at home first, try it in your garage, try it on your local pond first before you start going on some solo trips into the wilderness and very far from town and, and doing it alone and away from people. Just practice. It's just like any, it's just like a sport. You know, you wouldn't expect to jump into a sport and be the best at it right away. So why would you expect to do something like this and be great at it right away without a little practice and learning, you know, what you like or your comfort level or or what you might need. So those are a couple tips for you if you're gonna do this and I highly recommend it. Just just take the steps to get there and and always be as safe as you possibly can. You really gotta slow things down so you get more time to think between those things. You know, don't work up a sweat when it's this cold. We're already over 20 below zero right now. So you can't be out, you can't be sweating because it's really hard to warm up after you're sweating. All right, we're gonna put some Louisiana fish fry in there with that cast because I've fished down in Louisiana before and it is the dirtiest, nastiest water I've ever seen in my life. And they eat a lot of fish out of that water. So if anybody's, if anybody tells you they got a Louisiana mix or recipe, they do know how to make a fish taste good, especially eating it out of that slop water. No offense. This is cusk, and cusk will stand alone, but I figured I'd bread it up. And then these are cusk nuggets. These are, these are about as good as you can get in the state of Maine. I don't care what kind of fish you put up against it. I don't believe it's gonna beat it. Here's a little pro tip for you. If you guys are camping like I am where you shut the heater off at night or even if you don't shut it off tonight on a night when it's in the negative 20s get your coffee pot ready to go for the morning mine's all ready to go so if that freezes tonight it's fine I just put it on and thaw it out whereas if it freezes in a plastic container it's awful hard to pour it so you gotta thaw it out first and then pour it but that one I don't care if it freezes it's going on the heater tomorrow morning Ah, cusk nuggets, baby. It doesn't get any better than that. I don't know why I'm out here fishing for musky and perch when I could be fishing for cusk. <laughs> That's going to be a heck of a horse derver. And then after I eat that, I'm going to drive a big old steak into me. How big is the steak anyway? That thing is one pound. So 16 ounce. We're going to drive a 16 ounce steak into me and cook that up with some onions and peppers and mushrooms. Maybe do a little bit of mashed taters on the side. Probably don't need them, but when it's this cold, a little bit extra won't hurt. We'll throw a little garlic in the pan too before we get started. I found some minced garlic in town. You could probably call Cusk poor man's scallops now. <laughs> they are good. Oh man, it's like better than lobster. I'd eat a cusk over a lobster any day of the week. You guys ever notice how the ugliest things taste the best? There's a plate of cusk nuggets right there guys. That's a uh, that's a 12 piece for you. Can't buy that in stores. That Louisiana bread and seasoning, it's got a pretty good little taste to it, but it kind of gives you that nice crisp outer coating on it. Man, you throw that on there and the insides just white, pure white sweet meat on the inside. Once you get through that outer crisp, it just adds to the flavor. Wow. Yeah, it's edible. Mm-hmm. Yep, that's going to hit the spot tonight. I don't know if I'll be able to drive that whole thing into me, but be able to drive quite a bit of it into me. Have steak and eggs in the morning if I don't. It's good. It's edible. But I'll tell you one thing right now. I'd trade 20 of these things for one piece of moose meat. It's hard to beat moose meat. I am pretty partial to moose, but 
This ain't bad, but it ain't booze. Well, that's going to do it for tonight, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Had a pretty sweet day being able to get all the way up here with no problems. No problems with the trailer, no problems with the truck, no problems with the gear, and got all set up. So those are those are great days when you have a day like that. I wish I would have got up here a little earlier and had some lines set, but I had to get that registration taken care of for the snowmobile and for the truck, and I had to wait till my town office opened. You can register a snowmobile online anytime, day or night, but if it's a new snowmobile, you have to do it at your town office, I guess, for the first time. So something the state hasn't quite figured out yet. Got a couple GoPro batteries charging. That's about it. Pretty quiet. I just went through all of my tackle over here in the pack basket over here. Went through all of my tackle, went through all of my traps, changed the line on four of them. I'm going to run two with wire leaders tomorrow, 30 pound wire leaders, and three with 30 pound fluorocarbon. I'm running two aught and three aught octopus hooks and weights depending on the depth that i fish mostly one eighth and the bait i'm using are sea smelts about yay big they're eaters so if i don't catch anything on them i can take them off the hook and eat them they're pretty good eating actually gear is all ready to go i love working on tackle before night you know before going to bed and going fishing the next day it's just a great feeling knowing that everything's ready to go and there aren't going to be any problems tomorrow. Always, always enjoyed working on my tackle the day before. Yeah, that's going to do it. We're settled in at 19 below zero right now Fahrenheit. It's pretty chilly out there. It wasn't quite as clear as I expected it to be. So I wouldn't be surprised if it doesn't warm up by morning and maybe get a little snow on the ground. I'm going to get up regular time and run out and get some bait. Come back in and set some traps up. And maybe have, maybe do a couple things off the wall tomorrow. We'll see. Bed's ready to go. I opened it up so it can start to get a little heat in there. There's not much heat in here. We're sitting at 31 degrees. Where, well, where the, over the heater's 31 degrees. So probably in this corner where all that snow is still on the ground, it's in the negatives or close to zero. Thanks for tuning in for the first day of this series, Travel Day. Travel days are always fun. I'm going to do a little bit of reading and drink a little hot tea and hit the rack and get at it tomorrow. And hopefully we have an awesome day. The question is sometimes asked why a state like Maine, so sparsely settled, poor, weak in all external aids, can send forth such throngs of masterful men who, east and west, step to the front to lead, direct, and do. We who were brought up among pine trees and granite know the secret of their success. It comes not wholly by taking thought. It is in the blood. Here, we got a high flyer.